This is my hardwood stash, like these white oak beams right here. I think they're 10 foot long. Then over here, this is walnut. The rest of that all the way back to the wall is uh, red oak. The reason I have this, long story, I have a customer that has requested 23 wall washers. They're a diamond, nothing complicated about the design. This is gonna be a very simple pattern to make. So we're gonna grab a board that will be close to what I'm looking for, laminate it after we run it through the thickness planer, and from there, we'll ram it up in the sand later this week, get him a sample made off of it. And while I'm down here, uh, I will introduce you to my 1959 John Deere 430W with flats. All I gotta do is shoot air in the tires, file the points, and this thing will crank right up. I don't use it anymore, and I didn't want it to ruin, so I put it down here in storage. Thought I'd give you a little peek of that while I was here. So this is the board I'm gonna use. The total dimension of the pattern is gonna be 15 and a half inches, seven inches wide. Total thickness of this is gonna be two and a quarter inches. Well, right now I'm right at two inches. This was cut at two. What I'm gonna do is run it through the planer down to an inch and an eighth thick. And I'm going to cut it in half and laminate it. The total length is 36. So that will give me plenty of room to play with. All right, so once I get those two pieces cut out of this, I will see the rings, how they go this way. All right, on the other side, they'll invert, so I won't have as great a chance of it warping on me once I laminate these, as long as I put the opposing rings to each other, and I'll show you that later. But right now, let's get this thing up to the thickness planer and get it down to size. Like I said, I got quite a bit of meat to remove there off of each side and uh, then we'll get these laminated. Hey, you think he knows we're watching? Hey! Uh, there's gonna be a slight little cut to any board when it's rough like that. You always wanna start off planing it with the bow up, and that keeps it flatter on the first pass as you go through. Now, with each pass, I will flip it over. Once I get a flat side on the top, that is. Then I will flip it over and alternate the cut until I get it down to the right thickness. As I do that, that will help maintain a straighter board. So I got it down to thickness. I'm gonna laminate these two pieces that I cut out of this and make one two and a quarter inch thick piece, which will be about this big. Everything's generally flat until it gets right here. That's called snipe on a planer. And as much as I tried to control it, I still have a regular thickness on right here at this region. thing I'm going to do is rip one edge here and that'll give me a flat surface. 
Looks like I can set the fence at seven and three eighths. I'm ready to rip these, but look at this. We're going to turn it the other way. Let's see if it does that. It does some, but not as bad as that other side. I will keep constant pressure on the tail as I push through here, and that will take the wiggle out. And we're going to rip these to the exact same width. You see how the rings go this way like a matchbook? Uh, that's the way I want these laminated. First thing I'm going to do is lay out a center line right down the middle. All right, so I have cut a guide here. I've got to make sure it's wide enough to cover that point there. And I'm going to put this board right on that line. I'm going to keep it right up against it. And I'm going to take my Thor hammer here. Got that one. Looks like it is right on the line here. Alright. That is not coming off. I will bring this up to the blade without touching it, hopefully. I know. Uh, apparently I wasn't recording. <laughs> but all I did was I laid, I have a parallel running fixture here. I put it on the line. And then I brought the fence back and forth. That's where I was happy with it. And then once I did that, I just cut this side along with the other side. Now that I've done that, I have two sides and I will do away with the fixture board entirely and uh, use only this side and this side as a face against the fence. We're going to run it right there and see what it looks like. got one side left and then we will have a diamond. I've got the blade at a two degree angle and I'm going all the way around the perimeter to adjust that draft angle. Okay, the lighting's not that good here tonight. I need to bring mother light around, I guess. But uh, this is going to move in three quarter inch increments with that same draft angle held on the blade. I'm gonna keep my nail in here. It's easier to push this thing across and then I'll remove it at the end. This will be the back side of the pattern. 
like I said, the draft angle is going to be uh, the same on each step. Let me cut this off for now and go get my light. Now we have to move it in an inch and a half. So I'm setting at 11 and a half. So I need to put this on 10. Looks good. I messed up, guys. That was supposed to be three quarters of an inch on the back cut. How can I fix that? First of all, I can fix it by not cutting that deep all the way around again. I'll have to fill the slot in. Okay, now I'll set my depth back where it was. May as well use this for a gauge, huh? <sighs> Alright, so now we're going to move this out three quarters of an inch. So it's going to be ten and three quarters. So we're going to take our draft angle back out now. We are going to set the fence at three quarters of an inch from the blade, which is right there. And let's just make it six inches. Make sure we're parallel. We're too high. Let's see. About right there. Alright. So now we got to go an additional three quarters. It's going to be set at six and three quarters. Looks good. Looks good. So this is the diamond. I've got to go over the whole thing with some filler and get these areas where the blade ran out here, fill those in. I'll just pack filler down in that deep area too. It'll stay. So I've got to go back and put a second layer on it, but I want to get this window chopped out on the back side first.
It's kind of like working with clay, huh? Beautiful. Go all the way around it now. Alright. I don't know about you, but I'm satisfied with that. Okay, so we are finally ready for the last step of this process, and that is to punch a hole for the pool. Good enough. I already rubbed it down with graphite, so yes, I'm, we're ready to ram this thing up and get a test piece done. put it like this and I'm not going to use my finest sand on this if you're going to have an object that's going to be 30 feet or more above you the detail is not going to be that important you're not going to be able to read the date on a dime that far away that's for sure Let's keep that exposed as we ram around it. Then I'll go back. This way I don't actually accidentally hit the pattern. Gotta be careful because I'm only three quarters of an inch from the next level of that, so I gotta keep that in mind. Scratch it up a little bit and stay away from the actual pattern. Brush this away. We'll douse it with the, this face. Alright, that shouldn't move on us. Thought I heard some iron, and I did. All right, we're ready to flip it. Blow out the registration holes. All right, so we'll get our coat. And I'm putting way too much parting dust out. I'm gonna go with this size riser and I'm going to put it as close as I can probably right there we're going to stab it here the iron will come in on this side go through we're going to cover this pull hole with a dime where it doesn't have sand get packed up in it I'm going to start off with my finest sieve only to get my logo in there and uh, then we're going to go with the next level up not gonna be an issue. So now we'll just cover the whole back with this level. 
All right, looks good. Let me see where my edge is here. I'm gonna hold down on this riser as I dump a heap of sand in on top of all this. And that way it doesn't shift on me. It'll move if you don't watch it. All right, let's go ahead. There's our riser. I don't want to hit it. Brush it off again now that this is packing down. I think I'm safe here. All right, so we have both halves and we're gonna do all our gating in this one. So, I'm going to put two gates, and I'll have a runner that comes right here. I'm not going to make these that wide. riser I'm going to go the full width of it right here so let's pull this thing out So it was moving that way. So. So, looking at the pattern, I don't have any sand stuck to it. I do have some evidence right there that I need to focus on. But for the most part, it looks good. We have some what I call feathered edges, like right here. And I'm gonna lean this over and just rake that down. So any of that that would break off will not fall back into the mold. Yeah. Swipe it one more time. Because I do want a slight radius here. That's a must. Along with right here. You do not want a sharp corner. Not right in this area because it will have, it'll create hot tears on you. You want to avoid that. You don't want to compromise the casting in any way since this thing's going to be so high up in the air. I don't want it hitting somebody in the head when it, if it were to break. 
Good, I'm not blowing water out. Very happy with that. Of course I would be, I made the pattern. <laughs> All right, so let's set this thing on the conveyor. I'm gonna set it, uh, I'm gonna turn it this way because I wanna be pouring it from that end. This riser is gonna come out a lot easier. I wanna verify I did get my dime, <laughs> and I did. We're gonna vent the stew out of this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We did all our gating on the drag, so there's really nothing here to do other than cut my pouring basin and get this thing assembled. Yeah. That's a nice size cup. That'll keep anything from aspirating. I'll be able to keep that cup full and uh, not let it starve for iron. Just so I don't forget which mold is which. Uh, I'm gonna turn it the other way. Looks like we got a casting. That gone, that thing's still warm. I poured it 24 hours ago, and it should be cooler than that. I'm using the uh, Sooner Turbo Disc wheels uh, to cut all my gates with. They do a great job. And then we're gonna switch over to the Sooner uh, grinding wheel.
All right, so this is it. Uh, the back, I'm not too crazy about. It's got some shrink voids there, but uh, for the most part, it's a good sound casting. I'm going to run it over to my buddy Bill tomorrow and get him to drill the hole. Then I'll get it in stress relief tomorrow, and then I'll get this shipped to the customer. I've got a little leeway on this. I'll be able to mold up two or three uh, here and there as I'm doing the straight edges and be able to uh, get these guys taken care of in a couple months. So hopefully this won't cause any headaches. Here I have my friend Bill Zaremba uh, drilling out the 7 8 diameter hole that goes down through the middle. Uh, he will be machining these in the batch once this gets approved and uh, that'll take a lot of slack off of me. And to be honest with you, I'm not equipped to drill holes anymore. <laughs> I just don't have the time uh, to do any kind of machining. Bill and I go way back. Uh, we were machinists a long time ago in the late 1900s. But uh, he does excellent work. Here's the casting. Here's the pattern. Pattern's much lighter, by the way. And they didn't turn out exactly perfect. Got some little pits here. Um, I'm assuming that's not going to be a big deal. The main thing is the front. The back side, if I'm right, they're probably going to have some kind of mortar on the back side of all that anyway. So. But yeah, this is it, and I'll show you, <laughs> I'm going to try to, uh, I'll show you the amount of shrinkage we have here. Very, very little. Uh, honestly, I can't tell a difference. We're fixing to get it packaged, get it in the mail tomorrow, and let the customer take a look at it. That thing's heavy. That casting is 22 pounds before we drilled the hole, which is 7 eighths. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is one of the few, maybe the only one, where I've done a uh, pattern from scratch all the way up to the final product. Well, my friends, I need to cut this video now. It's getting entirely too long. Be sure to like and subscribe uh, if you haven't already to see all other upcoming projects happening here at Windy Hill Foundry. I hope all of you remain safe, healthy, and uh, I will talk to you later.